right. So hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining this Collaboration Center preview today. We're very excited to share all about the new um, Iron Platform Collaboration Center um, that we have for our community. And here's just a quick peek at our agenda for what we'll be covering in this um, tour for the day. We're going to give an introduction to the new Collaboration Center um, and the new learning management system or LMS that we have partnered with called Schoology. Um, right at the top of our webinar, we're gonna talk about our transition plans um, and how we're moving from the old Collaboration Center to the new Collaboration Center. And then we're gonna dive right into the tour. We're gonna take a look at our new catalog for searching and joining IRON projects and courses. Uh, we're going to then dive into our collaboration hub and, and that is the place where you'll have your profile and notifications, you'll join and participate in projects, discussion groups. Um, there's some also some new features that we have available like sharing of resources um, and private messaging. And we'll take a look at those as well. And, and then we'll sort of wrap up with looking at the management tools for teachers. So where you go to manage your students. We'll take a look at what the, the new platform looks like on a mobile device. And then we'll have time for some question and answer um, from those of you that are here in the group. Um, you can put questions in the chat box as we go. I will try to keep an eye on those and answer them if it is um, related to the topic. Um, I may also hold some questions till the end for us to get to. Um, so please feel free to share your, your thoughts and impressions and questions in our chat box as we go or using the Q&A feature. So we're going to dive right in. Um, we're very excited to have our new collaboration center be powered by our partner at Schoology. Um, and Schoology is a learning management system that is used by teachers and students, primarily K to 12, um, all over the world. Uh, millions of users connecting for doing online lessons and learning together. Um, it's a really great platform because it's highly interactive and really well suited for project-based learning activities. So IRON, we have been working with Schoology for the past few months to configure their environment uh, to be suited to our IRON projects for global collaboration, connecting students and teachers from around the world. Um, we're really excited about this partnership, working with Schoology. Uh, they have a whole team of developers that are constantly working on the platform, making improvements and enhances enhancements and then integrating the latest technology tools. So we'll get to look at and see what some of those fun things are in the tour. Um, but there are their teams also making sure that the platform and system is um, up to date and compliant with the, you know, the latest safety and security protocols for students um, in the classroom. So uh, we're very excited to be partnering with them um, and taking a look at our collaboration center in that's powered by Schoology. So you may see that name around in some email notifications and things like that once we get going. Okay, so just to look at our next steps and where we are um, with the new Collaboration Center. So from now until September 21st, we're doing IRON preview tours for, for educators in our community um, to take a look and get a sense of what the new environment, what the new Collaboration Center will be like. Um, during that time, you can continue to use the current uh, platform, the current Collaboration Center, to connect with teachers, students, and your projects. Uh, and so then the goal is on September 21st, we are launching the new platform. Um, all current IRON teacher members will receive instructions for how to log into the new platform. Um, and during this time, the, the old Collaboration Center may still also be available for some transition. So you can continue to log into both. We're going to help everybody get into the new platform. Um, but you'll still be able to go back and see some of your old activity. Um, so again, current teachers, we will create account or will create accounts for you in the new platform and send you those instructions. So starting September 21, you'll be able to log in. And then onward from there, we'll um, be continuing to host some support sessions and training sessions um, for helping you get started in the new, the new collaboration center. Everything from login support to getting set up to um, creating your student accounts and things like that. Um, we'll have a whole series of training sessions 
post-launch. Okay. And again, feel free to put questions in the chat box as we go, um, if it's about next steps um, or, or other items. If you're joining us today and you're a project facilitator or country coordinator, we have other trainings available for you to help you get ready. Um, in fact, we have a country coordinator uh, training tomorrow that's happening and one next week. So there'll be some other resources if you have a, a, a special role in iEARN. Um, and Pavel's asking if there's going to be a new ID and password for teachers. Um, you, if you're a current iEARN member, your username is going to transfer um, and you will reset your password in the new platform. So all of that information about how to log in um, is, is going to be sent um, to you on the 21st. And then we'll have some, a lot of support calls and tutorials to help you get in. Um, and if you're a country coordinator in here like Pavel, I know you're already in there and exploring. So you have a little sense of, of what it will be like. So that's great. All right. So we're going to take a look at our, our new platform and we're going to start the preview tour. Um, our, our collaboration center um, has many different spaces and features to allow us to really have interactive activities, the ability to track and celebrate um, learning outcomes. And so we're going to be looking at a couple components in this preview tour. And we're going to start with logging in um, and accessing the catalog and management tool, which is where you, you register and join courses and projects. Um, and then we're going to jump over to what it looks like in collaboration in the collaboration hub. Um, so there, we're going to be going through quite a few pieces today. Um, everything is connected and, and we'll tour you through it all, starting from what it looks like at login. All right, so we're going to start with catalog, um, which is where we are going to search and join for projects. So this is kind of similar to our current collaboration center where you can search for a project um, by keyword and see all the projects and click which ones you want to join. All right, so we're excited to have a great, really robust search tool. You can search by project name, age level, SDG, language, subject area, um, and find a project that's best suited for you and your students. So we're going to hop over and take a look at what it looks like. Um, I'm going to log in um, all this Dumbledore as Professor Dumbledore at Hogwarts, um, if anybody else is a Harry Potter fan. And just to note here, you will still go to iron.org to log in. This screen that you see in front of you will be on our website. So you'll still be able to log in directly there once we launch on the 21st. So you'll have a username and a password and we'll log in. Um, once you log in, you're taking to um, our homepage with a welcome video and immediately you can get into the project and course search. Um, and I can actually already see the projects that I'm registered for and that I'm a part of right here on my homepage as well. So this is a little similar to your current dashboard where you can see your projects and courses once you're, you've joined them, but you can also do directly a search. Um, there's also this projects and courses tag um, where you can also search and, and get those, um, those quick links to your projects. So I'm actually going to start here and we're going to take a look at how you can search for projects in iEARN. So let's say I know that I want a project that's related to the arts. I can click that and have my arts related projects. Let's say I know that I work with primary students and I want a Spanish language project. Um, so I can search by all of these different areas, whether it's subject, age level, um, SDG, if I want to um, search by sustainable development goal, languages for those that are um, facilitated in different languages. Um, and also if I'm searching by online courses for teachers or if I'm looking for a learning circle, there's some other special tags down here I can use. All right, and I get my results. Um, it looks like a good project fit for me is De La Mano de Mis Abuelos, uh, which is a project about grandparents. Um, and um, so we can read the description here. Um, so I see from my um, search this project and I can register and join right away, or I can click and learn more about it um, and see what are the activities, what sort of outcomes, um, what, what is a little bit of the description of this project. Okay. And so if, I, if it looks good and I wanna register for it, I can register and see the timeline of this project. So it's going to be March to June 2022. 
So this project's not starting for a little bit, but I can see that here. Um, some projects will have different sections depending on the dates, uh, but I think many in iEARN um, are ongoing and we'll have a couple months there. So let's say I'm, I wanna join this project. You can just click to register and join. And then congratulations, I'm joined. So I can go directly to the course from here in our collaboration hub, which we'll take a look at, or I can stay here in the catalog and keep looking um, and go back to another course search. Um, so a lot of great ways for us to look for different opportunities. Um, I'm actually gonna go back and let's see, let's scratch day, great. Let's say I know the name of my project um, and I'm just trying to join it and I know I'm joining Scratch Day, I can always just put it in the search box and have it pop up. So you know, anywhere you see these, these search box boxes, if you're just trying to get there quickly and you know the name, you can do that um, and then just register for it. Um, so great, this is the search and join tool. Um, again, let me clear these fields. There are some other opportunities that we're going to start to have available in iEARN. Oops, like courses for teachers. Um, I don't see any in here yet, but I know that the team um, is planning some courses for teachers. Um, so that will be a fun option. Okay. So then again, from my home page or from my projects and courses page, I can see all of the projects and learning opportunities that I'm a part of. And I can click right on the tab to go to my project. Um, go, click, go right to finding solutions from our catalog. All right, so we did um, searching and then also joining, which is really just the registering part. Um, so teachers and students can join, uh, choose which type of projects they want to participate in um, and register to join. And that way facilitators know who's in the group. All right, so from here, um, we're going to take a look at the collaboration hub. Um, and so I'm going to, again, pop over to our collaboration hub where we're going to look at where most of our activities are happening. So my easy way to get there is just click on a project that I'm a part of, um, Talking Kites, and I'm immediately, boom, I'm in the collaboration hub. I'm ready to participate in that project and get right into that project. But first, we're going to take a look at maybe some of these other things that you can do in the hub. Okay, so I'm going to start with our profile. Um, so within the new collaboration center, teachers and students can update their profile um, and you can add different information about what you teach. You can choose which information you want to share and other participants can see the courses and groups that you're a part of on your profile page. Um, a really neat feature, uh, if you're a teacher, you can post updates um, to your profile page. So this is sort of like a social media feed. Um, you can um, say what courses you're teaching this year or something exciting that you're working on, whatever update you'd want to share on your profile, you can post here. You can even post a little video welcome and say hello on your profile page on your updates. A lot of cool possibilities and features for teachers and students. We're going to take a look at settings. Okay, so within my settings, I can see some of my account information here. Um, I can change my password if I ever want to change it. Um, and let's see here. Aha, this is what I wanted to point out, time zone. Um, you have the ability to set your time zone in here. It's automatically set to UTC. Um, so everybody will come in with the UTC time zone, but you can change it depending on where you are. What this will do is if there's any events posted in iEARN, um, like a video conference or things like that, it'll adjust it to your time. So it's a handy setting. The other things I wanted to point out is I know everyone's curious about notifications and what sort of notifications you can get with the new platform. And um, you can configure it within your profile. Um, so if you wanna get updates or comments um, or activity, whether that's in a, a, a project or a discussion group, you can sort of toggle your settings and which uh, notifications you'd like to get. And there's a couple places you can get them by email. There's also this bell at the top, which will show you any notification or request um, that is in the system. So you'll get little numbers up here with your notifications. Okay, so 
It's a quick look uh, about profile and settings. We're gonna take a look next at projects and courses within the Collaboration Center and in our hub. Okay, and this is where we'll have all of our iron activities and, and learning opportunities here in this courses tab. So if I click on courses, I could see all of the projects and courses that I'm a part of. Um, Albus Dumbledore has been quite busy, already part of a couple projects here, uh, but I'm gonna go into our demo project for this tour and we'll take a look. Okay, a couple things to take a look at here. Um, when you click and go to a project, the first thing you'll see is the materials, which is all of the activities and interactions for that, that project. Um, and so all of our project facilitators right now are organizing this, and it looks different depending on the project. Some projects will have folders with different parts of the project activities. So we see here in our demo project, there's sort of a part one, part two, part three. Um, some of your facilitators might put dates on these so you know sort of when everybody is doing which part of the project. Um, so there's different things that you'll see when you come to a project. And this one, I sort of see a beginning, middle and end, um, which is helpful for me. Um, and I can click in and um, see what's in each part of the project. So let's go into introductions. All right, and so the facilitator here has left me some instructions about what we're doing for in introductions. And then I see I can click in and just get right into participating. Um, so this will look familiar. This is like a forum, right? The discussion forum where we're all engaging on a, on a like topic. So this topic is introductions and sharing some information about our names. And you can write comments and replies. So we're looking here at a couple comments and replies. Um, so you could just add your comment and it would populate. Some of the really nice features of this platform are, you could do formatting, um, bold or italicize, or use bullet points for your comments to organize your thoughts. There's a spell check. Um, and you can also insert links uh, if you wanna put a hyperlink to something in your comment. Some other features are you can attach files. So let's say it's a photo you wanna add. Um, you can also, this is a really cool feature, um, you can do an audio or video recording, start recording it and, and post it right there in the project. Um, and this is a cool feature if you have maybe a group of students um, sharing about part of their project process or maybe um, pre uh, presenting something, um, you could choose to do a little video clip right there. Um, and here's just an example of what that would look like. Um, I made a little video of my dog um, that you can see here. He's introducing himself. His name is Jake. All right, um, so just a quick look, we're gonna look at another discussion and see some more examples of what they look like. So this is a discussion. The prompt is where we live. Students are sharing about their home communities and what makes them special. And um, one of the things I wanted to point out is that in our, our new platform, all of the media that you would put in your comments, whether that's a PowerPoint, um, or a PDF or an image, um, you can view it right in the forum. I can just click on it. I don't need to download it and it pops open. Um, so that's a very handy feature. You don't have to download to see things. You get little pictures of them, but you can also preview many things without downloading them at all. And we're gonna see that within some of the activities we're looking at here. And again, reminder, if you have questions as we go, please do put them in the chat box. I'm keeping my eye on the chat. i would be happy to answer as we go, uh, right? So, all right. So we have within our, our courses or within our projects, there are the activities and the components and different places where you can collaborate. Uh, I wanna show also a few other things that you may see as you're participating in projects. I wanna take a look at our community again, Here's some instructions from the facilitator with what we're doing for this phase of the project. Um, there's um, some conversation and forum discussions. And I'm gonna take a look here at some other interactive things we're doing as part of our project. Um, so you may see, depending on which project you're participating in, um, facilitators might plug in interactive tools like Google Documents um, or slides for people to collaborate on. And in that case, you can just click open, pop in, 
um, access it. And if depending on if you can edit or not, you can add your thoughts, right? So this is, um, we're looking at some SDG resources and this is a, a teacher resource list. Um, another example of interactive tools you might see um, if our project facilitators using other tools like Padlet um, or Jamboards or things like that, they can put them right in the forum and the collaboration center. So you can see and participate and interact in projects in many different ways. Um, so we're really excited that, you know, beyond just the forums and the discussion posts back and forth between students, we can also have um, our other interactive tools embedded right in the platform. And, you know, we can embed videos very nicely in, which is very helpful, um, just, to, just to give you a sense of how other things display. Um, you may also see reference uh, websites embedded in, if it's a resource that all the project participants are looking at, like this um, SDG resource. Um, and you may also see your project facilitator put um, class activity plans or instructions or things like that as PDFs, in which case you can click on them and it'll load right in the platform. You don't need to download it. Um, so I know sometimes uh, facilitators will make great resources and you can just click and view them right here in the project. Okay, so really excited here. A lot of, um, a lot of interactive activities. Uh, just to show you other things that you'll see on the side. Um, updates is sort of the news feed for a project. So your project facilitators might post updates here. Um, about what's happening, the timeline, or just trying to engage the participants through updates. So we see here some of our facilitators um, posting an update or, or a resource for the group um, as, a, as an update. So those are there. Um, you can also see who else is a member of that, the project by clicking on the members and you can go right over to their profile pages by clicking on them. Um, and we're not going to get too far into this today, but there is a video conferencing uh, feature within our new platform. And so some facilitators may organize conferences that, that you can join right directly in the platform. Okay, so that is a, a quick preview of how the, the projects um, and activities work within the Collaboration Center and looking at how, you know, some of those discussions and interactive elements that you'll be participating in within our project. All right, and within our new Collaboration Center, we also have groups for discussion. Um, so this are things like the Teachers Forum, the Youth Forum, um, things where you would chat, share updates, share resources, and things like that. Um, so let's go ahead and pop over to our Collaboration Hub and go to our Groups tab. All right, so Albus is part of a couple groups like the Teachers Forum, the Youth Forum, and I'm actually going to go to our Project Facilitators Forum, which has been getting some nice activity as our facilitators are sharing with one another and preparing for our launch, um, just so you can see what this looks like. So uh, our discussion groups, you don't see the materials here um, because we're not following a, um, a set activity structure. These are just groups for connecting and networking and sharing with one another. Um, so again, there, there may be updates. Um, there may be discussion threads that you can participate in. You maybe you want to share your reactions or feedback, for example. Or maybe you have a new topic that you would like to start, and you can click and add a new discussion. Um, so our, our groups are a little bit more free form. Um, Another great um, feature that we're going to look at next is resources that we have. Um, and within, within different groups, you can share resources with one another. Um, if you're sharing particular lesson plans that you made or handouts or um, presentations or things like that that you want to share, um, each of the groups do have a resources field and feature. So we're going to take a look at that next, uh, which is sort of the last big tab in our collaboration hub which is resources. Um, and again, this is, this is something we haven't currently had in our collaboration center. Um, and we're really excited about having a place where you can upload and organize your own iron project resources. You can review activities and lesson plans that other teachers are sharing with you. Um, and you can check out resources from um, different iron centers um, that, that may help you with your projects. Um, so let's take a look at our resources. So I'm in the home 
This is where I can add any of my personal resources that I wanted to. Let's say I made a really great lesson plan as part of Talking Kites project that I used in my class, and I wanted to save it here. I could do that and add, um, add that resource, whether it's just um, a, a file from my computer, I can just attach it and upload it here, uh, which is really great. I can also browse and see resources that are shared with me. Um, so if I think this is a good example, we've been sharing resources in the project facilitator group, um, some templates and things and activities for um, sharing with one another. Um, so as, as we grow in our new platform, you'll see resources in the teachers forum or other places um, that might be helpful for you as a teacher and, and youth also perhaps sharing some resources there. Um, so really excited about that. Again, it could be any sort of resource. It can be a file, like a PowerPoint, a Word document, a PDF. Um, it can be a link. It could be a Google document that you're working on and you want to save here. Um, lots of different resources that you can um, create, share, and also see from other uh, groups that may be helpful to you in your IRON project e experience. Okay, uh, a couple more things to look at within the new platform, and we're going to um, go back to our collaboration hub to look at another new feature we're really excited about, which is private messaging. Um, and this is where you send messages to individuals or groups in the collaboration center um, it, to do some one independent networking. Um, and just a note that this is enabled for teacher to teacher only um, to protect students uh, safety and security. Um, students don't have messaging enabled so it's only teachers that will be able to do this. Um, and so Yuri asks, will we continue to use the current resources getting started teachers guide yes. Um, that's a great question, Sayuri, and I, I think we're working to put some of those resources in the teachers forum um, so people can access them easily. Um, so you'll, you'll see those in the next couple of days in the teachers forum um, for um, our community to use as they have been created and are very helpful. Okay, so hopping over, um, our messages tab is just up here. Um, and I can see I have a message um, from Professor Hagrid. And so when I get messages, I'll see a little notification up here. Uh, depending on my settings, um, I may also get an email uh, notifying me that I have a private message. And this is what it looks like, pretty simple. Um, you, you have text to get, if you attach anything, you can click and view it right in the forum. Um, you can download it, but you don't have to. Um, and then I can respond to Hagrid and, and type something, or I can attach files or links. Um, or resources as well. Um, so the, the, the messaging is, is great for if you're connecting with just a group of teachers in your project to do some planning together. Um, let me go ahead and take a look and just show you what you can do for sending a new message. Again, I can send it to um, a couple teachers if I wanted to. If I am working with a group of six teachers for Talking Kites, and we're coordinating and want to have some messaging back and forth, we can do that. Um, let me just type them here and write my message and send them a message. Very intuitive, very easy, um, but again, only enabled for teachers just for um, keeping students' safety and security. Um, so students are only collaborating in publicly open spaces. All right. Um, to wrap up, we're going to hop back and look at our management tools um, just to help with how we're managing student accounts um, in the new platform and to give you a little bit of a preview. Um, and so this is where we'll be tracking student activity and managing student accounts. Um, so again, I'm going to go back to uh, my the first place when I logged in, our catalog and management tool. Um, and this is where everybody is registering for projects. Um, this is also where um, we do our reporting. So I'm logged in as Professor Dumbledore, and I have this administration tab here. Um, so real quickly, just to see and give you a preview, I can click on accounts, user accounts, and see all the people that are in my class. Um, and so I see myself, um, I see Harry Potter, I see a test student. Um, these are all the students that are currently in my class. Um, and so if I'm in here, I can go, and edit that student's account. 
if I need to, if I need to help them with something. Um, and I can also change them if um, they're active or inactive. Um, you can see their username um, or help with uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, emailing a password reset link to them. Okay, so this is managing them. We're going to have um, a student import um, and we'll be sharing about that at launch to help everybody get their students over to the new platform. Um, but once you're in, this is where you would go to manage your students active and inactive as user accounts. And then we have um, this tab where you can see everybody's activity. It says staff dashboard, but know that that's for staff and students. Um, and so I'm going to see everybody um, at all of my all of my classroom here. Um, and I can see those four people that we saw before. This time when I click on one, and I'm actually just going to click on Albus, um, I can see here, again, this information that we have. Um, I can see as soon as it loads, um, which projects the student is regis registered for and which ones they've completed and when. Um, and I can also view their transcript. Um, and so within our catalog, um, it'll keep track of all of the projects that you complete um, and all of the projects that your students complete. Um, and you'll be able to track and keep your certificates here in this tool called Transcript. So I can view this student certificate. It's gonna probably take a minute to load. I'll pop back to it in a minute. Um, and so in that way, I can sort of track activities and projects. And for myself, I can see my own transcript and see which parts of courses I've completed or projects I've completed and when. So it'll, it'll keep track of your whole iron history and every project when you complete them, you can always go back and see um, that certificate um, for those projects. And your students will be able to do the same. Okay. Yep, so we're going to swap out that certificate, but it looks sort of, um, you know, it, it will have all the information you expect for um, what the project is, who completed it. Um, so we are updating the design a little bit, but you get the idea. You can click and download your, your certificate directly from the platform. Uh, okay, and what is, all right, so I'm seeing a question come in about the average number of students in a group. Um, so within the platform, you can create as many student accounts as you want. So if you're teaching 100 students, in the year, you can create 100 student accounts, and we'll walk you through that process. Um, and you know, within the, the projects, they can join and participate. Um, you may also choose to keep, I know that some of our um, teachers like to group students um, and have them participate as a group, and you'll still be able to do that with this new system as well. Um, although I do recommend if you want your students to get individual certificates at the end of a project, to set them up with individual accounts. Um, that way they can each get recognized for their own, um, with their own certificate for completing a project. Um, so even if they are participating as a group, um, you can have them set individual accounts. Um, and it, you know, if they, they go through all the steps, the facilitator can give them certificates. Okay. Uh, Yoshi asked if you can delete inactive students. Um, Yoshi, you can't delete them, but you can um, inactivate them. And also, let me go back and see, reload here. One thing you can do that I didn't show is let's say um, you're, you're an iron teacher for many years, you can sort your list. So what we can do is we can filter it. And I can say, give me ones who are, who are active. Um, and then I can update and only see the active students. Um, so there are things you can do to sort and see things. Um, so if you've participated with IRON for many years um, and you're adding students all of the time every year, there's things that you can do in here to help manage your, your student list um, and see the ones. And you can also search by their student name too. So I don't have any Johns in this group, but let's put Harry. Um, let's say I happen to have 100 students here, I could search. Um, and easily find the student I'm looking for. Um, so that's just a note. We're going to um, wrap up with just a preview of the mobile experience, um, and then we're going to go to Q and A. Um, so I have a little video uh, screencast here of what our collaboration center looks like 
on a mobile device. So obviously in our preview, we've been looking at sort of a computer view, um, but now we're gonna take a look at a mobile device view. So there's a Schoology app. You'd log into Iron um, through Schoology. And then from the app, um, you can navigate in your project. So it looks like, all right, here we go. We're going to our notifications and I can go to my course, I'm going to my demo course and I'm seeing those folders we were looking at before. I can click in and directly access different activities that I wanna access and participate in. Um, so we're seeing um, some navigation here, clicking around, looking at those discussion posts here. I can see what the topic is. And then I can see what people are saying back and forth to one another. I can view their images um, and I can also add my post and participate. Okay, so um, is very, um, it, it, the platform translates well in mobile view, um, something we're very excited for. Even all of the, the other tools and plugins that we put in, you can access on your mobile phone. So we just saw there the, the Google document that was embedded, um, an SDG video, um, and I can always open anything in, in other apps as well. And so, yep, I can access my profile, my messages, uh, any of those things that are available to me right from the app. Very excited to have the Schoology app as well. Okay, so as we wrap up, I'm just gonna share a couple resources that we'll be providing over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're gonna continue to do these collaboration center tours to give the platform overview um, for our teachers and, um, and iron, ironers in our network. Um, from the 21st onward, we're gonna be organizing the post-launch trainings. Um, and so I believe we'll have four a day at different times, so you can join in different time zones. And this will be, we'll, we'll give a little bit of a training on login and setup support uh, to help you get started. And it'll be a time for, for question and hands-on support. So we'll be publishing that calendar as well um, that will be happening after September 21st to really help the community get over and get in the new platform. Um, we do have some other resources that we'll have available. Um, we, like we saw the teachers forum, we'll move some of our training materials over there, um, some of the tutorials for um, easy access. And um, also within Schoology, uh, I'll just show you this as well. Um, there, you can connect with us directly, um, but Schoology, since it's a great learning management system, they have developed all of these resources and tutorials um, that are relevant for the platform. And so, um, there are some, some great resources for instructors here as well um, that we'll be connecting you to, um, as well as curating our own tutorials. Okay, so um, I have a couple frequently asked questions that I'm going to post here and go through before um, we open up to Q&A. Please do put questions in the chat box. Now is the time to ask your questions, uh, anything that comes to mind um, as we launch. I'm gonna go through these, we'll stop the recording, and then we'll take the time to answer questions for those that are here in the webinar. Um, so a couple of our, the frequently asked questions is, um, can we use, still use the old collaboration center? Um, so yes, until September 21, please keep using our current collaboration center. Um, we're going to keep it open for a short period to allow access after launch um, for our current members. Um, so it'll be open for about two months to help with some of that transition, um, although we will be archiving it um, and, and moving everybody over to the new platform. Um, we do have, so for languages and what language options are available, I'm actually going to jump back over to Schoology. I forgot to show this. Um, we do have within the platform, you can translate um, the platform into different languages. And so this would, would translate a lot of the platform language, although you may still notice that um, any post that's from a teacher or student is gonna be in whatever the language they put it in. So I can see here a post in English and a post in Spanish. And so I'll still wanna make use of my Google Translate tools um, to translate this page and get it into the language that I want. Okay, but the, the platform itself um, it does have a couple languages available, um, and I know they're uh, working to um, update more all of the time. Okay, 
the the next one that I wanted to highlight um, is our as we move to a new platform, we're going to do student registrations with emails. Um, so if students have a school email account, they can connect their school email account to iEARN, um, or if they want to use a parent account or other account, um, we will be doing all student accounts connected to email and providing some support around that as it's going to be a bit of a change for our community, uh, but allow us um, to stay up to date um, and compliant with some regulations that we need to meet um, to work with schools. And the, the last one, when do we start using the new platform? Um, so we'll, on September 21st, if you're a current member, you're gonna be getting those instructions on how to log in. Um, so you can get started right away, register for your projects and hop over and join. Um, and we're really excited for the launch. Um, okay, so with that, I'm going to um, say thank you so much for joining and stop our recording. And I'll be around to, uh, for Q&A a bit longer.